Hey friends, Alan Lee here with The Handyman Journey, and today we are gonna be talking specifically about how to hire employees as a handyman. So here at The Handyman Journey, our mission is to help you guys exceed in your handyman business, to help you guys take your handyman business to the next level, or to start a handyman business altogether. So in today's episode, we are talking specifically about how to hire employees as a handyman. The first thing that you need to know is you need to do some research if you're looking to hire some employees because it's gonna rock your world. It's gonna be completely different than anything that you have ever done as a business owner. So I would highly recommend before you start anything on the employee front to get the book, The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. I will put a link in the description below where you can find that book. You need to read that book if you are interested at all in expanding your handyman business and taking it to the next level and hiring employees because that is very, very, very important. Everything I'm gonna be talking about today is directly out of that book, The E-Myth Revisited. So the biggest thing about businesses that are big is they didn't start out thinking like a small business. They started out thinking like a big business. So you take businesses like IBM or Apple or um, McDonald's, they didn't start out thinking, oh, I'm just a small business and this is all I can afford right now, so this is what I'm gonna do. No, they thought of, in 20, 30, 40, 50 years, my business is going to be this big and how would it interact with people, its customers, its product, how would it interact with people down the road? That's how I need to interact with my businesses and my products right now. So that is one of the most important things you need to do. So when you're looking at hiring employees, step one is to write out a business organizational chart. Now this is described very in-depthly in that book, The E-Myth Revisited. That's why I recommend you start there. But um, I have created this, and basically it looks like an organizational chart of a business. So starts with a president, COO, chief operating officer, and then what's below that, right? You might have, and it looks different for every single business, how you wanna structure your business and things like that. You know, on one end you might have, so you have the president, then you have the accounts manager, um, the service manager, the marketing manager, the customer relations manager, and then, so those are all underneath the president, and then below those each have subcategories of um, offices that your business will hold. So like, uh, for instance, below accounts manager, you'll have your accounts receivable or your accounts payable, the person doing that. Um, under the service manager, you'll have independent contractors and technicians. Under the marketing manager, you'll have maybe a marketing company that is running your marketing for you. And under your customer relations manager, you'll have the customer relations personnel. Now, all of these things may look and they may, they may look different and they may mold differently throughout the years that you're running your business. You may have to change this business organizational chart as you go, but the first step is very important and that is creating a organizational chart so that you have a vision for your business. That's basically what you're doing here. You're creating a vision for your business. So, for instance, my um, president, COO, and then service manager and then independent contractor and technician, I've now added another category, another uh, another job in that uh, in that category of estimator. So we have technician, estimator, and independent contractor. We really don't use independent contractor very often, so that may just fall off the waistline, but I'm gonna keep it there because you know it's an important thing in case we need it down the road. Okay, once you've created the business organizational chart, now this is all of the positions that your business will have when it's big, said, and done. So in 20, 30 years, however long you want your business to, uh, to take to get to that point, whether it's five years, whether it's 10 years, whether it's 20 years, when your business is done and as big as it's gonna be, you will have all of these positions filled. And you, as the handyman currently, the business owner, will be operating as the president COO. So you will be at the top of the pyramid and then you will have all of these other jobs below you that you'll be managing, okay? Now, a lot of times people think, oh, I started a business so I can go ahead and just, you know, lounge in my, in my chair and just, you know, hang out and not do any work. That's gonna take some time. You have to, you have to work up to that point. You are not the, I'm, I am the president COO of my business right now, but I cannot operate solely in that job right now. I currently fulfill all of the positions that I have listed out here on my business organizational chart. And so do you. So it's very important to realize what stage of business you're in because you can't just be sitting back relaxing when you have to be out there in the field working on, uh, you know, working on homes or writing up estimates or running the marketing or answering the phone calls or running the accounts receivable or the accounts payable. So you need to understand where you are. Okay, 
So once you have that business organizational chart wrote, written out, that is all of the positions that your business is going to have. So you need to start writing scripts or systems for each of those um, for each of those positions. Okay, so you start out with the positions that you are currently operating in. That's at the, the bottom of the organizational chart. So we are the customer relations personnel. We answer the phones. We are the marketing person. We you know make posts on Facebook. We create Facebook ads. We create Google ads. Um, we are the technicians. We are the um, we are the accounts receivable and the accounts payable managers. Like that's us. We are those people. So as a technician, you need to start writing out scripts and systems for that position. Um, before you start with technician, I would probably start with customer relations personnel and answering the phone because that is probably one of the most important things to offload so that you can focus on the actual work of the business. So that's what I did. Um, focus on customer relations personnel. So you write out every single thing that you do in that position. So for answering the phones, right? That's what the customer relations personnel does. Answers phones, um, responds to emails, responds to Yelp requests, sends thank you cards, um, you know, sends birthday cards, things like that. You need to write out, and this is a tedious process, but it's very important to get it right. Write out every single thing you do in that category. So as the customer relations personnel, write out how do I talk to people? When people call me, what do I say? Specific wording, right? And so I have I have a script book on this where I have the Handyman Journey has a script book that that outlines all of the scripts that I've ever created for all of my um, all of my positions within my business. But it's important to write out every single thing. So hi, this is Alan Lee with Honestly Handyman Services, like blah 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 blah, whatever you have to say, right? So what do you what do you say when when people call you, when you answer the phone? What do you say if they if you call them and they don't answer the phone and you have to leave them a voicemail, what do you say with a text message? How do you operate? So your day-to-day -day operations, every single thing for that customer relations personnel. And then once you have all of those scripts written out, you are now ready to hire for that position. And I would highly recommend that you start out hiring for that customer relations personnel rather than your first hire as a technician because it's, um, it's best to hire off someone that is going to answer your phone calls and bring in that work that you can do that work and then you look to hire a new technician. So um, once you have all of those scripts, all those systems written out, you're now ready to hire a customer relations personnel. Now for a customer relations personnel, you're not looking for someone necessarily who knows the complete ins and outs of construction. You're looking for someone who has good people skills, um, loves talking to people, and is a great communicator. That's really what you're looking for. So you're gonna start you know, putting, putting things out there, start you know, taking in interviews. Um, what I would always recommend is ask around to your local friends and family just to see if they have anyone that might be interested. It just so happened when we were looking for our customer relations personnel, um, one of our friends from church, her mom um, was looking and, and looking for a job that she could do from home because her husband was just about to retire. She wanted to stay at home, spend time with her family, but she also wanted a part-time job to bring in some income. She lives an hour away from us, but she is our customer relations personnel and she does an absolutely amazing job. When we hire her, we give her the scripts, we give her the systems, we say, here, this is what you do, word for word. So that way, when you hire someone, all they need to do is read a piece of paper because it's exactly what we do that we know that has worked in the past and that is exactly what they need to do. They need to duplicate that and get the same results as us. Um, and if they're not getting the same results as us, maybe maybe our systems or our, um, our scripts were not, were not clear enough to make it, because basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to duplicate ourselves um, into another person, which is extremely hard to do, um, but it's important because when you write the scripts, you need to basically have your, uh, your whole ethos in that script so that um, it's not just a robot reading off of a piece of paper, but they actually have that enthusiasm. So um, for instance, one of those ethos things that, that I implemented is putting at the top, remember whenever you're on the phone to smile, right? It sounds silly, but the, the, the client cannot see your face, but they can hear your smile. So that smiling on the phone is one of those things that gets my passion through my customer relations personnel onto our onto our clients. So that is how I portrayed that. And then, so once you hire on a customer relations personnel, you now move up to a customer relations manager position, okay? So you're, I'm still not president COO yet, 
I am now the customer relations personnel. So, or customer relations manager, managing that customer relations personnel. And that looks like managing them and fine tuning that system and fine tuning that script to get things perfect. And things always change. This, this stuff is always gonna be changing and always be adapting. So it's always gonna need some managerial going on. So now, as the customer relations manager, I need to write out every single thing I do, the script, the systems of everything I would do as a customer relations manager to manage that customer relations personnel. And now I need to hire out for that customer relations manager. At that point, I move up to the president COO. But in other categories, I'm still not president COO. See, I'm still technician, still marketing guy, still um, you know accounts receivable. So you see, you have to duplicate this process for every single um, for every single position that you have in your company. So very important to get right. And um, yeah, super awesome thing. Now you can start working on the technician. Once you get that customer relations personnel set up, I would highly recommend working on the technician aspect of it and hiring for your next technician. Um, and basically you do that the same thing. So what do you do when, when you go to a client's house for an estimate, right? How do you look? How do you act? What do you say? What do you say when you call someone that has called your business um, to try and get an estimate? Um, you know, all of these fine details, you basically need to take your brain and write it on paper so that someone else can follow it and duplicate it. Um, and this also comes with like a code of conduct and things like that that you want to implement as far as like uniform, um, you know, hygiene, things like that. Like there's all kinds of things that, that incorporate um, in creating good scripts and systems. If you guys have any more questions at all, I would absolutely love, love, love to talk with you. You can send me an email over at handymanjourney at gmail.com. You can also check out our website at handymanjourney.com. Um, and also check us out on Facebook. We are, we have a Handyman Journey Mastermind group on Facebook that is filled with like, I think it's like over 3,000 people now. Absolutely phenomenal group. It's full of people desiring to create or take their handyman business to the next level. So it is full of great information and I'm on there as well. So I would love to chat with you guys. Um, thank you so much for tuning into this video. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, please like this video and subscribe to this channel. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and leave me a comment in the comment section below with what you guys thought of this video and if you guys learned anything and how you think that you guys can implement this in your own business. Thank you guys so much and I hope you guys have a fantastic day.